this is the Electra Beckham HC260 planing machine. And I've had this one for about 22 years. I bought it from you. You won't find Electra Beckham on the market these days. They've been taken over by Metabo. But if you look carefully at the overall appearance of this machine, you'll find that machines like this are being made under the names of very many companies around the world. And I suspect that some of these are made in the same factory. Now, I've been looking after mine very carefully, and that's really why it's lasted so long. And one of the jobs that I'm doing today is to reset the blade height. Now, I've got tungsten carbide blades, and I've recently had them sharpened. So now is the time to set them up again, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I've brought you in a little closer, and I've turned the machine around so you can see things a little more clearly. I want to just point out the important parts, and then you'll understand what's going on. This is the so-called fixed bed, and the one on this side is adjustable for height. And in this setup, as we have it now, you would be using it for surface planing, or jointing, as it's called in some parts of the world. And this one's adjustable so that you can go up and down, so that you can dictate just how much wood you take off in each cut uh, when you're doing surface planing. Now, the so-called fixed bed actually does get removed when you turn this machine into a thicknesser. But for now, we'll still, still call it the fixed bed because it's this one which we're going to use to take the reference measurements for the height of our blades. At this stage, let me remind you that before you do any maintenance on any type of woodworking machine, make sure you always disconnect the power cord. And if you cannot disconnect the power cord, then you've got to isolate the machine in such a way that there is absolutely no way that it can be started accidentally. Now this large cylinder here is the cutter block and it's this block that spins round and it has the blades set into it and that's how the cutting action uh, is performed. Now within the cutter block we have two other pieces. You have the cutter itself or the planer blade as they're often called itself and you have the lock bar. Now I'm going to bring you in closer again so you can look at these in a lot more detail. Now my blades are made of tungsten and they're resharpenable and they have a cutting edge just on one side. Some blades are double sided and some blades are disposable. The key feature of planar blades is that on the inside you'll find a notch like this one here and that one there. And these notches are there to take the projection from this uh, bolt which goes through uh, the locking bar. And using an Allen key you can adjust the position of this bolt and as you do so, so that flange on the bolt goes up and down. Now if you now marry the two things together so that the locking bar and the blade are united you'll then see that as I adjust uh, the bolt in and out, so that blade is going to go up and down. Now, the way you hold this whole assembly in place is very simple. There are four bolts on the back here. And if you were to undo these bolts so that they start to come outwards, then if they're set into the cutter block, you can see uh, the undoing action will actually tighten uh, everything in place and it's through that mechanism that the blade is held precisely where you want it to be. And before these bolts are finally tightened we make sure that uh, we get the adjustment of the blade height absolutely precise using the adjusting screw on either end and then do the final tightening of these bolts. Now in order to put the blade back in we first of all introduce the locking bar that goes down in, and then we're going to uh, put the blade in, making sure that the blade is round the correct way so that these cutouts here uh, match up with uh, the locking bar. And it goes in like so. Now we've really got to make sure now that we get those notches in the blades uh, actually sitting uh, comfortably united with the flanges on the adjusting screws, which are there. 
Now initially it might seem a little tricky uh, and it's made slightly easier by just uh, loosening off, in other words it's like a tightening motion, loosening off these adjusting bolts here. Uh, just enough just to get them starting to do something but not absolutely jamming everything in place. Now when you feel happy that you've got that blade engaged uh, with the setting screws uh, then you do need to just do a few checks. First of all check that the blade is correctly centered crossways here so there's not more sticking out one end than the other and then just tighten up the middle ones just a little bit more just so that it help holds it in place and we're now going to just make sure that we've got that uh, married up by doing a couple of adjustments at this end and noticing that the blade will go up and down and the same here yeah so everything is united as it should be the next stage then is to get all four of these bolts here starting to just pull things in tight but it's only just nipping it's not you're not at this stage trying to hold everything in place you're just trying to get a starting point for the adjustments right there we go so those are just nip and you can check that you haven't overdone it by making sure that you've still got free movement with the adjuster. Okay, well I'll just remind you this is the fixed bed and I've got here a piece of wood which is perfectly flat and you can check that it's perfectly flat by putting it on the fixed bed and just looking to make sure there are no gaps under there. And this piece of wood is about uh, 45 centimetres long and the purpose of this piece of wood is to give us an idea of how high the blade is. Now the way it's done is very simple. On this end of the piece of wood I've got a pencil line. On this portion of the fixed bed I've got three pencil lines and they are five millimeters apart. And they may not show terribly well but I, you have to trust me they're there. And the way we're going to try and adjust the blade is to get the pencil line on the piece of wood set over the centre pencil line there and then we're going to move the blade past it. And I'll just show you. When the blade is at the right height it should just make this piece of wood move a fraction. So at the moment the blade is a little bit too low so we're going to raise it a bit. A bit there. I'll try and do it evenly at this end. Okay now I've got it positioned there and as I move the blade you can probably see that's moving by about a centimetre. So a centimetre is a little bit too much. I want to uh, lower this a little bit more here and get it so it's moving at no more than five millimetres. Still a bit too much. Keep doing the adjustments until it is about right. A tiny bit more. And that's it, that's moving by five millimetres. I now need to make sure the same is happening at this end. And so I'm going to do the same process. Too much at this end again, so I'll close it in a bit. Try again. Still too much. And that's just about right. Now I'm now going to check this end again to make sure nothing's changed and that's spot on and I'm now going to tighten the middle two of these locking bolts remember tightening is actually an undoing motion so it's slightly counterintuitive but I'm going to tighten those two quite tight 
And I'm just going to check once more that nothing's changed. That's five millimeters there and five millimeters there. So I'm happy with that. I'm now going to tighten the end to. Now you mustn't over tighten these because if you break off one of these bolts in the cutter block uh, you could be in for an expensive bit of repair work. So they supply a relatively small spanner deliberately so you don't over tighten. Right, I'm happy with that one. I now need to turn this round so I can get at the other cutter block and I need to make the same adjustments. And just do these final bit of tightening up and that's done. So the only tools we've needed have been this little baby spanner. Remember what I said, don't over tighten. We've had this little hex key for doing the adjusting screws and this nice straight piece of wood. Now, if you're making adjustments to your planing machine, uh, please make sure you follow your manufacturer's instructions. The whole purpose of this really was to show you the principle involved and really to show you how I, I go about doing mine. Now that all that's done, the final job for me is to put a little bit of this lubricating wax on and uh, mine is made by Libron and just put that on all the uh, surfaces where your wood is going to pass and then everything is ship shape, ready to go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.